Hey there, welcome to another edition of Cambridge Inside Out. My name is Robert Winters. I'm Judy Nathans, and we were off last week. Yeah. That's right. We were out gallivanting. Well, I was going to a round table, which I'll talk about, but it was, was Valentine's Day. Oh, that's right. Okay. We just, so we were celebrating Valentine's right, Day. Right, exactly. So anyway, today is uh, February 21st. Mm -hmm. Yes. Of 1917. 1917? That was a bad Russia, year. 2017. Russia. My father was born in 1917. Yeah, but wasn't it the Russian Revolution or something? The Bolsheviks? He was, not, he was not involved. Yeah. So he was older than my father. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. anyway, so we, uh, there was uh, no city council meeting yesterday. Right, because of the holiday. Because of the School holiday. vacation week. Uh, there was one last week, but sure. we weren't around to talk too much about it. Right. But we could talk about it. It's kind of a short time. meeting, but we can talk a little bit about it. Talk a little bit about that. And there's some other kind of interesting things going on around town. So that we'll talk about. Like you went to the Volpe meetings. So went to the Volpe meeting, the and right. can definitely say some things about that. Even yeah. have a presentation, or at least some portion of a presentation. Oh, we can even show you some of the that. features from that. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, as we often like to do, just sort of start oh. off. Is any anything happening at the national level that we oh. should know about? Well. Or or maybe we don't care. Seventy-seven minute press conference, which I only caught bits. And I didn't pieces. watch it. I live perpendicular I to the Trumpian plane. Yeah, it. <laughs> talk about you know uh, fooling people. Some the best thing I heard on the news, or somebody reported said, well, he's either crazy. He's all along. He's either crazy or he's crazy as a fox. And I'm beginning to think he's just crazy as a fox, which I think I can see. I think he's also crazy, but. I'm I'm becoming very zen about it. I'm just oh, sort yeah. of, I'm just sort of dealing with what happens and not well, letting it get under my skin. That's supposedly supposed to be a good thing. Yeah. But One interesting thing about it, just just you know, which actually does relate to locally here, uh, there is some uh, um, uh, a, a par apparently a pattern. It's being encouraged, but it's also just happening on its own of people taking interest in civic life. Uh, oh yes. Uh, political life. Running for office. Running for office. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially women. Mm -hmm. Yes, very yeah. much. There was an article. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go right. to it, but it was a, a from the yeah, Christian Science Monitor right. called "The Surge in Young Young Women Planning to Run right. for Office." And mm -hmm. I guess it came as no surprise to you when I was looking at some of the emerging candidates for local municipal election in Cambridge. Do we have more? Uh, we always have a big group of women, don't we? Uh, yeah, well, the thing oh, is, right. is there were several who would. Um, pulled papers with, well, filed with the State Office mm -hmm. of Campaign and Political Finance, mm -hmm. even before January 1st rolled around, which is in okay. itself was sort of an unprecedented thing. At least one of them is actually very actively raising money now, too. So, Are we going to uh, talk about that? Or uh, we will get to, we'll get to yeah. that a little okay. bit here. All right. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. And, yeah. um, you know, so one thing I think is probably fair to say is we will probably see uh, more women candidates, more candidates who for whatever reason, uh, might feel particularly energized by the results mm -hmm. of the national election. Yeah. So people are paying more attention, because I guess during eight years of Obama, although certainly something should have been paid attention to, uh, people kind of got complacent. Oh, we got a good guy in the White House, you know, yeah, they yeah. weren't as involved. So now people have taken a sort of more of a yeah. all hands on deck, we got to sort mm -hmm. of uh, roll up our sleeves and do it ourselves kind of attitude, well, which I think is generally good. Well, apparently the second most uh, research thing, according to, I don't know, Google or something, not Google, is the 25th Amendment. Do you know what that's about? You heard uh, some fourth part of it. Is, is this where, the succession? No, it's where if the Congress or some certain people get together, they could actually get rid of the president. <laughs> it, well, there, there is one about, about incapacitation. But also, uh, or, uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm always right. a little cautious because I remember yeah. people would say, like after September 11th, they would, people would say, oh, Osama bin Laden, he's, a, he's that crazy maniac. And then I said... Well, maybe he is, but he's also just yeah. a dangerous no, this, strategist. This, is, this isn't just yeah. a mental instability. It yeah. has some other, so it's actually um, been more and more yeah. now in the mainstream. So well, something we'll to see. pay attention to. Look it up. Yeah. It actually wouldn't be the first time in history that a president was incapacitated while in office. Well, again, he doesn't have to be incapacitated. Yeah. It's if the con <clears throat> people rule that he is somehow unfit. In other words, there is a way out. If, there, uh, there might be a way if, out, but, but the Republicans would have to, as no, they say, honestly, grow a spine. 
Well, actually, I think that, that you yeah. know, if you're a legislator and you have yeah. a legislative agenda, yeah. as long as what the president does or wants to do or says or tweets mm. doesn't get in the way of the agenda you plan, and if he actually assists you in carrying out your agenda, yeah. it's very much in your interest, even if he's a little off right, the wall. Right, but so far that's only half true. I don't think he's actually helping them carry out their... He's, he's actually well, putting think, roadblocks I think part, partly, yeah. though, is that it was sort of the first hundred days to sort of end the president president tries to sort of well, express himself. When yeah. the new congressional budget is proposed, I think that's when you'll start to see uh, the House of Representatives well, asserting itself in a big but when way. when you have European leaders asking Pence, who should we listen to, you or the President Trump? That is pretty bad. Well, considering the fact that, in the, if you recall, <laughs> he answered very diplomatically in the, in the lead up, that. even before yeah. a vice president was chosen, mm -hmm. it was reported that people close to Mr. Trump were actually Same. offering right. to indiv certain individuals, I forget exactly. actually whom, maybe Pence was one of them, says, listen, if you agree to be vice president, right. I'll put you in charge of domestic and actually, foreign Actually, I think it was Kasich. Might have been Kasich. Well, yeah, it could have yeah. been. Well, what, what am I in charge? Well, you're in domestic. Oh, also that. I said, right. Oh, really? So, yeah. so, so if, exactly. you think, if you look at it in those terms, yeah. if you're somebody from a foreign country, you say, well, the man actually was suggesting that would be the rule, right? So if a yeah. vice president comes, you say, well, are you in charge? Right? Yeah. <laughs> so They've got a way a... out. I mean, Pence is not my favorite, but boy, compared to Trump, he would be uh, a yeah. relief. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's go so, on. Well, actually, one yeah. other thing I would say okay. about the, the influence of national yeah. politics, on the, part, of, part of it, which actually I'm not happy about, but is yeah. this, is that is that, you know, when you're running a city and, you know, doing all the same things that are important at a municipal mm -hmm. level, most, most of, not all, but mm -hmm. most of these national level discussions mm -hmm. don't really have a lot of relevance locally. Mm -hmm. Maybe if funds are cut or other things, well, or yeah. if you're oppressing particular individuals yeah. because of their identity, mm -hmm. sure. But for the most part, when you run and you become a city councilor or a school yeah. committee member, most of those national issues are kind of a little off on the yeah. periphery. Yet, I, f I fear yeah. uh, that many candidates this year will simply use national level... Oh, to try to run their campaigns. To run their campaigns, yeah. to do it's vote for me because I... Will support you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I feel this way about national politics. I hope which, not, because I don't think that's going to get yeah, anywhere. Yeah, I, I, I hope that voter, local voters will be able to distinguish exactly. between their passions... And what's having really to do with national politics city, and yeah. whatever passions mm -hmm. they may have about local affairs, and they are different. And I, but you know, the thing is, is that it's it's always true. You can you can uh, you can draw a lot of attention mm. using certain things, even if they're well, not. Well, I'm, I'm sure Sanctuary City, we're going to hear a lot about because that's right. one issue that does overlap. It does somewhat yeah. overlap. Yeah. yeah. So, but but I, anyway, yeah. that'll that'll be interesting to see to see what if degree that's happening. Yeah, yeah. To what degree will national uh, discussions when does that down. start becoming more uh, out there, like the candidate, what they say? You know, at a June? municipal level, you know, yeah. it has changed a lot over the yeah. years. Once upon a time, you didn't actually really know who was running until mm -hmm. it was nomination papers were made available, which, which is, is June it? 1st. Yeah. And then you return them July. Uh, no, actually, excuse me, July 1st. And you return mm -hmm. them at the end of July. Mm -hmm. uh, you would obviously you knew about incumbents who were running yeah. again, but sometimes you, if a, if an incumbent was not going to be running for re-election, you might not hear about it until then. until yeah. right around then. Mm. Um, I think it was one time was it Jimmy McSweeney was running where there was some he he, he put out. Uh, that had been long. I don't even know that name. Uh, he ran in I think ninety three ninety five. Oh, okay. I had period. a little kid. I but then he him. he was sort of putting up billboards way early in the game and letting it be mm -hmm. known. But up to the, before that, you really didn't hear too much about municipal campaigns. I wish campaigns. it was like that with the president too. Oh, I think too, I think we would we would time. all benefit if if much national shorter. political campaigns were yeah. shortened dr drastically. Yeah. Money, uh, and everything. Yeah. But then you actually and and by the way, jumping back up to yeah. the national level, mm -hmm. one topic that really needs to be discussed nationally, mm -hmm. um, which I haven't heard anybody really talking about, is the really crappy way in which we actually bring candidates up to the level of becoming national level candidates. I loved Hillary Clinton, but the yeah. truth is, is that the process that led to it being a, a battle against Bernie Sanders and Hillary yeah. Clinton ignored, it just, just a bazillion wonderful candidates who were like otherwise who? out there. Well, the people think is... Well, this, in terms of women, well, people, I think people really want to... But people gave a lot of criticism, yeah. at least in the early goings, that yeah. 
that will we that it's sort of like we're continuing to maintain the Clinton legacy or the oh, yeah. Bush legacy, yeah, right? Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So, so where were the new candidates? I we used to say, where are the yeah. statesmen? I mean, I was yeah. I was happy we had Hillary Clinton in the mix because I thought yeah. that was wonderful. Well, uh, but yeah. but the thing is, if you look on the Republican side, mm. could if anybody the best they could come up if with? anybody could explain to me the yeah. logic, reason, or really. sense of a system that led to seventeen flaw mm. extraordinarily flawed candidates yeah. basically being at the only ones people had to choose from. It's, we can do so much better. And yeah. the process through which they even do the nominations, we have, yeah. they really ought to be more of a, a, a way in which uh, there's runoff elections or proportional mm. representation of some kind. Well, people point to the primaries as not being a very efficient way either. The well, way you have run in caucuses. If you have winner-take-all elections yeah. where right. one person, right. the guy who eventually got the, the mm -hmm. presidency, had far more name recognition, even though he was he had the highest negative ratings of right. all of the because Republicans were primaries was winner take all. Right. Democrats were proportional. Yeah, so yeah. so it's they they split the vote still probably would have massively, yeah. and that right. actually allowed the yeah. less least popular candidate right. to be the prominent. Basically, he got thirty seven percent of the Republican only, vote only overall. eventually. Yeah, right. Only eventually. So it's not a whole lot. Yeah. So, but the thing is, everybody's reacting to yeah. who the president is now, and. Mm -hmm. And it's I, I'm worried that the, mm -hmm. any kind of quality discussion about mm -hmm. how we actually uh, uh, encourage, you know, develop candidates. Well, but you know what? Until they gone. change the way they're paid for and campaign finance, it's going to be a that problem. may be a part of it, because and I don't see that discussion much, happening. And, and that's all part of it. it takes too right. much money to run. Well, actually, just briefly to yeah. mention that in places yeah. like in, in some place in Europe, they have these really shortened campaigns. Right. So there is no real massive we campaign. We have to that have that, but it. you see that happening? But it becomes country? much more affordable then, well, and you need to get a buy-in from the media. The whole voter thing, and right. nominee, yeah, that. It's a big thing we have Anyway, I hope somewhere over the next yes. four years, at least some people start reviving that discussion yeah. okay. of how we actually do elections here. He's out within a year. I keep saying Well, that. we'll see. We'll say, see. Eh. Yeah. Uh, in a year. There are a few things that are coming up here. Actually, why don't we sort of click Which on one? The, the Black History Month thing here, just okay. to sort of mention this here. Oh, no, it's oh, not wait, an iPhone. Right. Oh, gosh. Yeah, she's just right. Just so you notice, she was <laughs> tapping the screen like it was oh, an iPhone. Oh, my God. Here, I'm so right? used to that. Yeah. And we'll sort of see here, oh, right? hopefully. There yeah, you yeah. go. All right. All right. So, so anyway, this is. Uh, uh, and I, yeah. oops, I think we do it this way here. Bernice, um, let me get down so you can. So see there's a, a good event, an interesting event that some of you may take interest in, with Bernice McFadden, a novelist mm. who is going to be uh, doing a presentation at the uh, main lecture, uh, main library lecture hall right. this Thursday, two days from now. That's right. I think it's some get yeah, some there's some give you some food to eat at around six p.m. and then the program oh, really? starts at half food? hour. Yeah. 6.30. So anyway, if you're around and you want to um, yeah. kind of check it out, mm -hmm. I strongly encourage you to do so. Um, you know, uh, Mayor Denise Simmons definitely was a part of making that happen. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So what other things? Now, I believe you're going right after the show today. Yeah, to the you're second, going to I think, last second. mini bond info session. Right. And Did you read the latest figure? They I raised one point. Two million, million and they're selling two millions of bonds. So there's still so some not, to sell. But it's what is it? 148 people. That's 140 something people. That means a lot um, of people I was, put in the highest. I amount. wasn't necessarily interested until I heard what the uh, interest rate was going to be. And what is it? 1.6 percent, which okay. is better than the bank. It so, is, but your money's tied interest. up for five years. I, well, but you get dividends. It, yeah. No, you don't. Um, really? Every six months, you get money from it. I don't know. It oh, may just get rolled that. back into the bond. I, yeah, I think it's like compounded because basically so. it's tax exempt. But right. I, I figured out, I mean, if but you put I, in 20000 you'd save about a few hundred bucks. I wasn't but, so sure I was going to do it, but actually I was reading it today. Yeah. I thought, well, maybe I will. Yeah, I'm going to just do one or two units. That's it. Just to say I participated. Oh, if I'm going to do it at all, I'm going to go, I'm going to well, you have Blow the money to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't put that much money away for five years. Yeah. Now, I was finding myself being a little picky, thinking, I said, well, what exactly are they using this money for here? And I don't know if I approve of this, and I approve of that. Sewers and water stuff. Well, I'm all for that. PW. Well, it's I like know, the yeah, two million yeah. he said last week. No, uh, no, some of it was also for some other things. But wow. anyway, um, so another thing that I went to um, mm -hmm. this past week, we talked about school committee too, but yeah. uh, there was um, a meeting, you know, as we've certainly talked about on this program, uh, the... Volpe site in East Cambridge, mm -hmm. uh, which has been a, uh, 
a, a focal point of a lot of interest in people. Do you have Not a picture only, of that here? Yeah, actually, I'm going to bring it up. There's actually... Is it on this um, page? Here we yeah, go. It, All right, future plans. We'll, we'll pull up a bridged version. That's actually... A bridged version. Do that. That'll do okay. it. That'll be just fine. Um, but anyway, the... Um, uh, the the developer the, the deal was the basic deal was is that the Volpe Transportation Center mm -hmm. uh, says as part of a federal program says if you can build us a new building we will then move into the new building and then we will release the rest of the site in exchange right. for you having given us the new building it's an exchange agreement it's a total right? of 14 acres and they would be four acres for the building right according so to this. Yeah. so there was a, just a lot of sort of vague talk the planning board at, well actually not about the planning board but the city no. council mm -hmm. they had, there had been some discussions about um possible new zoning for the site it on, as my rec recollection is is it never really quite went anywhere mm -hmm. even though there had originally been a real rush to get it all done before obama left yeah. office yeah. Right. And then I think people laxed off because they said, well, he's going to be followed by Clinton anyway. So what's the what's the rush? You well, that, there's also other petitions yeah. going on. And yeah. Stuff too. Now, I don't think actually personally, my sense is that the the presidential matter is actually kind of irrelevant at this. Yeah, point. it's already right. In the, the General Services yeah. Administration is basically they've chosen a developer and the developer is MIT. Good. Right. The sort of the commercial uh, development mm -hmm. and real estate arm of MIT. Um, and you ain't uh, going anywhere. They live here, so that's they ain't a going good thing, anywhere. right? So They're not I think it's a really good thing. The big concern was that if you have an outside developer, right. they may have to show returns for their investors in mm -hmm. a few years. Whereas right. MIT is uh, much more of a long-term timescale. They know uh, the neighborhood. Time scale. And they know the, the neighborhood, neighborhood right. and they have a strong vested interest right. in making the neighborhood best. Mm -hmm. So anyway, there was a lot of discussion about it for a long time. How many people were at the meeting? You know, I, this is the lunchtime. I one, think right? probably a few hundred. Wow, um, really? Yeah. So what happened is this past uh, was it Wednesday? Thursday. Thursday. No, Thursday. Thursday the sixteenth. MIT had two meetings. Right. Just for convenience purposes, mm -hmm. one was at noon, the other mm -hmm. one was in the evening. Right. I went at to the, the one hotel. at noon. Yeah. It was uh, and it actually was because it was a water main break in the. So it wasn't center. where it's supposed so to be. So they moved yeah. it over across the street, but you know, and they and they provided sandwiches. Yeah. That was well, I knew good. they were going to provide yeah. food. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was it was very well attended mm -hmm. and pretty informative, and I will show you some of the the slides from it here. Was you there can, time for questions? There was a lot of time for okay. questions at the end, right. and what was particularly important about mm -hmm. it, in my view, was that mm -hmm. up to this point, there was everything was vague. The notion about right. where are you going to put the new right. Volpe building and right. what kind of what might appear at the site. They had right. been, remember was it Councilor Chung had suggested we should have a thousand foot tower. He said a thousand foot tower? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, really wow. stand out. You know, this is the one place where well, it could be built, right? They do and talk about 500. So, so, so a lot of things were kind of vague. Yeah. Um, so this was the, for me, this at least, this was the first time where uh -huh. you could actually see some specific ideas. There's no hard plans, but mm. some things are actually. Okay, so, so this is the first just so, looking so at it, right? So this is just some of the things. It's actually yeah. it's about twice as long as if the full presentation, but for those who don't know, the Volpe right. site is uh, so sort what, of what in Kendall Square. So what street is this? Um, that's actually Broadway. Right. That's Broadway. Okay. And the top over there is the the coming down on the right side is the Binny is the connector. It's the pedestrian path. Oh, okay. And then it comes down the other edge is uh, Binny Street, and then it wraps around by Third Street, and okay. then there's this relatively new residential building that was built sort of in the oh, yeah. in the middle in there. See, so it wraps around that. Is this anywhere building. near the Foundry Building? Foundry Building is actually off to the right edge. To the right yeah. over there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Over there. So anyway, it's a very significant yeah. slide. Let's want you to scroll down a little bit or, or punch through these slides here. All right. All right. So this um, one So, so at this presentation, they started out by yeah. first talking about not the Volpe site, mm -hmm. but some of the other developments that are now underway in Canada That MIT Square. is doing? Yeah. This is their stuff? Right. So this is the so-called South of Main Street development. Okay. And this, is, this stuff is actually happening right now. This isn't the K2 thing, is it? Um, it's actually in Ordered? sync with some of the K2 okay. ideas. But then again, Volpe is as well, quite honestly. All right. So eventually they'll knock so down Eastgate. So what does the yellow mean here? And those are the sites that are actually going to be developed. If you look at those, are actually the six parking lots. 
Oh, and basically, of they're course. building yes, on I six see. They're all parking lots. lots. Yeah. So this isn't part of Volpe. This is no. Something... It's completely wow. separate. But but again, it's sort of you can't really talk about MIT's plans in the area without at least. But so MIT con is developing these? This yes. is also MIT? Wow, yes. that's a yeah. lot of stuff. Yeah. So there's a lot here. What street let's is this just, again? Is that's this Main, main Street. That's Main yeah. Street. So let's okay. just punch through. All right. All right. Whoops. Um, Whoops. All right. There we go. All right. Well, all right. Is this it? Is this it? The all right. Well, we can just yeah, go this is any the next of these one. here. Graduate right. Student Residence Hall. Right. So some of the buildings that are going to go up there, you'll see the MIT Press Building is that little gray one down there. Oh, yeah. So this is this really kind of cuts through like a Wow, that's a huge there. tower. It's ta it's tall, but it's not the only tall one. There's some really large buildings that are really coming in. I like in the here. shape of it. Look at the architecture of that. Wow. Right. Uh, okay. Basically creating a lot of windows and a lot of you yeah. know, a lot of views from, for a lot of people here. So Proposed new... Can what's a head house? Perhaps. What's um, a Kendall head house? Um, the head house is really just the tea station. So oh. this is a, there's one at the Marriott, by, by the Marriott on the other side of the street. Yes. Yeah. And right now, off on the right is where the old F&T Diner used to be once upon a time. Wait, are they going to move the MIT Museum down there? Yes. Oh, that I didn't will know be that. down there eventually, I did right, not after know the that. buildings are built. That's so it's going to be pretty snazzy little in here. There's going to be okay, some housing, we've got that, so housing, the housing over here close to where one Broadway is. Uh, over so near, existing. Backing on to close to where the, the canal, uh, the, the, uh, oh, the canal is. Okay. Here. All right, so right. that's. Uh, Maybe we can just. Yeah, I was just curious what that was. Though you're going a little right. too fast for me. Uh, but anyway. So that's the housing here. If you look in the foreground, there's actually going to be a room for a market, right? Maybe a supermarket. We're hoping. Yeah. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, but that's part of that the Kendall uh, project. So let's go forward a little more. Uh, so this is again just to so you see the scale Jeez. of some of these large the and somewhat imposing thing. buildings. I actually was joking with some Whoa. of the MIT representatives that when those big cantilevered structures, they should put two gigantic iron hooks and hang a swing set from it. They kind of like I, I look at all this development. Happen. I say, where's all the parking? Because you're not telling me they people are aren't building have underground cars. parking. Really? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I don't, you know, maybe there'll be a lot or a little. I can't say for sure. But anyway, these are just some samples of what's actually part of that development project, which is again separate from the Volpe project. I don't see any kids in there? Oh, there's a kid in the uh, corner, these, maybe. These I don't know. Real, these aren't real people. Yeah, anyway, but it's going to have subsidized. Now, now we're getting to the real deal here. Right. So in the Volpe site, the first really substantive thing that they said, which really helps clarify things, mm -hmm. they said that based on a lot of reasons the, and constraints, the only place, and now they are settled on this, for where the Volpe transportation the building will, go, thing, yeah. will be at the northwest corner up by okay. Binney Street. It may move around within that little blue mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. figure in there, but it basically will be in there. And, and that's very different from where it is now. So they're going to have to continue operation right. yeah. of the Volpe Center while this is being built. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason. So they're the still constraints. using it? it actually yes. Being used? Oh, absolutely. It's a totally very active place with huh. a lot of government contracts. All right. Um, the other thing that I thought was really substantive and to learn at this meeting was that there's actually room for, in addition to the Volpe Center, mm -hmm. the new Volpe building, there is room for what they estimate to be eight buildings, right? So there are four over toward the southeast corner, two to the west going over by where the So the orange lives. are buildings? Those are proposed buildings. I now, see. It may not be, end up exactly this right. way. This is just very conceptual. But that's then, all part of the site? Yeah, and then there's two up at the northern yeah. edge along Binney Street. Right. So it's a total of eight buildings. Mm -hmm. Now, they will vary in height and mm. whatnot, so we don't know too much about any of that just now. Um, but you notice here that Fifth Street actually will make a very, very nice direct connection through the Volpe site. One of the mm. really negative things about the Volpe site right now is its complete Cuts lack off. of yeah. connectivity. It's a big walled off area. So they're going to create a road? I don't think it necessarily be a road, but it will be a pedestrian path. Oh, pedestrian right? pathway. Though so there may be new roads cut through for part of this as well. Well, because you, you have, have to deliver to services. Right. Yeah. Right. So let's move down. Right. Uh, another thing is that it creates a nice yeah. east-west connection, which connects over to the area mm -hmm. where the Broad, Broad Canal is, mm -hmm. and will connect over to the pedestrian way, mm -hmm. which is what aligns with 6th Street. Oh, right, right. where so, the canal and the, yeah. the stuff and is. So okay. we, we may get to some of the slides that actually show they're actually planning on putting retail on the interior as well as on the exterior. Mm. Pretty much anything that's ground level, you'll actually see shops and attractions mm -hmm. and whatever. So that's pretty exciting. Um, so anyway, the big open space, because there's a lot of controversy about where the open yeah. space might go. 
would be in the dark green as well as the light green. Uh, mm -hmm. If you look over there next to the Volpe, uh, yeah. the new building, apparently, unlike how it is right now, they'll be able to have a secure federal building, but still be able to make mm -hmm. some of the green space around it um, publicly accessible. So you have a very nice swath mm -hmm. of green space, open space cutting directly from connecting uh, Binney to Broadway. Do you so, know their slide? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got a few more here. All right, and um, again, so, yeah, so, so just yeah. yeah, just some more of the open space. You can see the dark grade was showing where some of the active retail is going to go as well. But this is just highlighting how much open space is going to be there. Mm -hmm. Now, in addition to the open space, so we can just sort of scroll through a few of these here. They were just trying to emphasize. They were just trying to emphasize just to give a sense of scale. So it's yeah. that one parcel right, right in there uh, would be comparable to Senate Park, so not which surrounded is on by Broadway. huge buildings, though. Right. <laughs> Now, another thing that's part of this uh, here, so let's just keep on going. Um, down, uh, just so let's just More. go, 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 yeah. Right here, so there's also, uh, part of the program is building housing, approximately over 1,100 units of market rate housing and 280 uh, subsidized, so-called affordable housing, based on the 20% inclusionary. Um, so for a total of over 1,400 housing units, comprising about 40% of the, the mm -hmm. site, uh, and of the or at least of the development, and then 60% commercial, which includes office and research and development, uh, and retail. We've got to be really clear about it. It'll actually include mm -hmm. retail uh, in in the mm -hmm. site as well. So anyway, there's uh, uh, plenty more we could say about that. I will just say we'll just sort of heights. come back to us important. and say here yeah. is that there may be heights they're estimating as could be as high as 500 foot. feet, which would be significant. That I think would make it easily the tallest building in Cambridge, but a what's, far what's cry the less. Tallest right now, about 300 something, three uh, something mm. in that order. Yeah, somebody said so, it was. So. Um, so anyway, some of this may change exactly what the buildings end up looking like. It's all yet to be determined. But what was really great about the meeting was that we finally at least got to get something concrete put before people so they have a yeah. sense of what, you know, where the discussion can now lead. Yeah, right? I mean, how much say anyone has, of course. I mean, when I looked at right there, none of it's very contingent on a neighbor like the Foundry building is. That's really kind of a really separate thing. But yeah. I think it no, is but I'm just saying the Foundry building, the next street over is very... East Cambridge residential. Very much so. Yeah. Anyway, we'll be back in a few minutes on Cambridge Inside Out. Bye.